ever had a moment with someone that was extraordinary and thought, oh man, I wish we had a photo of that? Well, in these cases, these lucky folks were able to get photos and moments in history that you might not have seen. But if you have, good for you. Proud of you. Hi, my name is Jessa. Please join me as we look together top 10 rare photos from history you've never seen before. And before we begin in the last video I was in, top 10 scary ways women were punished in ancient Egypt. The riddle I gave was, David's father has three sons. Snap, crackle, and the answer is David. Your next riddle will be at the end of this video. Number 10, Amelia Earhart. An American aviation pioneer and celebrated figure in the early 20th century, Amelia Earhart was the first female aviator to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Notably, in 1932, she became the first woman to fly solo non-stop across the Atlantic Ocean, covering a distance of over 2,000 miles from Newfoundland, Canada to Northern Ireland. Beyond her aviation achievements, Earhart was a prominent advocate for women's rights. She encouraged women to pursue careers and goals that were traditionally considered to be male-dominated. Earhart was also an author and a, pub and a popular public speaker, which I wish I could do, and she wrote several books about her experience in aviation and women's issues. In this photo, what seems to be a normal photo of Amelia is actually the last photo we have of her before she went missing. She may have survived her round the world attempt only to be later captured by Japanese forces. According to a newly discovered photograph, and according to the New History Channel documentary, the photo is found in a National Archive file as it has shown Earhart alive after her plane fell low on fuel during her mission. The photo depicts a woman believing to be Earhart and a man who looked like her navigator, Fred. A Japanese ship can be seen in the background, carrying what appears to be her plane, as her fate has been debated for decades and has sparked several conspiracy theories. Mona, what do you guys think? Are people just hopeful? Number 9, Volcano. We all love a good nature tour or park hike, but for this man, David Johnston, he really loved the nature of volcanoes and geology, and ultimately pursued his education in the field. He was working with the US Geological Survey at the Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, Washington, and he was assigned to monitor the activity of Mount St. Helens, a stratovolcano that had been showing recently a lot of activity. This photo is when he was doing his research on the earthly giant, but tragically on May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted explosively, triggering a massive landslide and a pyroclastic flow. David Johnston was stationed at the observation post on the ridge known as Coldwater 2, about six miles north of the volcano. He radioed in the now famous message, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it, to his colleagues at the USGS headquarters, alerting them to the eruption. Regrettably, Johnston's post was directly in the path of the advancing pyroclastic flow and he perished in the eruption alongside with many others. His body was unfortunately never recovered and he was only 30 years old. Number 8, the 1986 Challenger. I love space and I think space is really amazing and cool as so did these guys, the crew members of the Challenger. Francis R. Scooby, Michael J. Smith, Ronald McNair, Alison Onizuka, Judith Resnick, Gregory Jarvis, and Christina McOliff. The Challenger mission was unique because it included Christina, a civilian school teacher who was selected to be the first private citizen to fly in space as part of NASA's Teacher in Space program. However, the Challenger suffered a massive disaster when the failure of an O-ring seal in the right solid rocket booster. Cold temperatures on the morning of the launch weakened the O-ring's elasticity, allowing hot gases to escape and damage the external fuel tank, leading to an explosion that was witnessed by millions of people around the world, and it was a devastating blow to NASA and the space program. Following the disaster, the space shuttle program was suspended for over two years, and significant changes were made to the shuttle's design and launch protocols. After its investigation, the disaster also led to a renewal focus on the importance of safety in human spaceflight. Number seven, Menendez Brothers. We're all fans of something, whether it's art, music, or sports, and for the Menendez Brothers, they would be so excited to see that they happen to be in the photo card, but the most disturbing part of this photo is the fact that these two killed their parents before the photo was even taken. They went on a six-month spending binge with their money. The case this was so shocking to the media, including how after the deaths occur, the brothers went to watch James Bond's License to Kill and tried to use it as an alibi. How a week prior, their mother confided to her therapist that she was worried that her sons were psychopaths and how one brother brought an entire chicken wing restaurant with the parents' money after they had passed away. Their father was an executive in the entertainment industry and both went into private schools and the older brother, Lyle, was briefly enrolled in Princeton. After two deadlocked juries, LA prosecutors retired the brothers in a courtroom that did not allow cameras and the new jury found them guilty on two counts of the first degree. They were sentenced by the judge to life in prison. Number six, Aquino. 
Filipino people have been known to fight resistance against imperialism and oppressors, as that seems to be all of our history to be composed of. And that is the truth. And for Ninoy Aquino, he was opposing threat as a political activist against the long dictatorship and assailant of the martial law, Fernandez Marcos. He tried to run for president in 1973, but then Marcos declared martial law in 1972, preventing him to run. Benigno Aquino, or as we know his, by his nickname, Ninoy Aquino, was imprisoned by the Marcos regime for speaking out against him where he was locked in prison and tormented for seven years. It wasn't until he suffered a heart attack did Marcos' wife Emilda allowed him to go to the United States to get treatment, only under the condition that he does not come back home to the Philippines. But Aquino knew that his love for the people and the Philippines was more important as there were many people wrongfully prosecuted or just be found dead on the street for protesting against Marcos. He did plan to go back and before he arrived to the Philippines he warned reporters, hey this might be the last time you ever actually speak to me and he was right. In this photo was the photo before he left the plane out towards the Philippines airport. He kept saying he had a bulletproof vest on but the assailant shot him in the head. There were countless reporters that day that knew something was going on only for them to be all shocked to see his body on the ground. There's even footage of his assassination on Online, and his death sparked an outrage throughout all of the Philippines asking for justice. But of course, the United States always has to get involved in something, and they were able to get the Marcos family out of persecution from the very people he tormented and controlled for years. Number 5. Tyler Hadley Everyone likes a good party selfie, including Tyler Hadley, who we can see here drinking a party cup with some friends. But what they don't know is that if they walked into the master bedroom was the killed bodies of his parents that he ended moments before the party. Tyler allegedly decided how he wanted to commit the crime a few weeks prior to committing them. He often told a friend exactly exactly what he was planning to do at the time, noting that having a big party after a parasite had never been done before. Shortly after noon, Tyler wrote on his Facebook wall, party at my crib tonight, maybe. Around 60 people attended the party at that night and several had alleged to have noticed the smell of dead bodies. Gross. During the party, Tyler apparently told several people about what he had done. Tyler went on a short walk with a friend and Michael Mandel and confessed the crime. After returning to the party, Mandel discovered the bodies of Blake and Mary Jo in the master bedroom. Mandel did not leave the party immediately. In fact, he had continued to spend hours with Tyler and even took a selfie with him, which is what we see. Four hours later, Mendoff left the party and called the local crime hotline to report the incident, which is pretty smart on his end because if he did something, then you know Tyler would have done something to him. News of the crime was then spread by word of mouth and Haley was arrested early in the next morning. Number four, Tank Man. When it comes to revolution, all it takes is one person. After all, a single grain of rice can tip the scale. The Tank Man photograph was taken on the morning of the 5th of June, 1989, the day after the Chinese government had violently suppressed protests in Thailand. Tiananmen Square. An estimated 10,000 civilians were killed in the massacre following weeks of a student-led demonstration in Beijing and beyond against the communist regimes and the suppression of basic human rights and freedom of expression. The image captures a lone man standing in the middle of the Chang and Avenue just off the square facing down a column of four slowly advancing Type 59 tanks of the Chinese army in a defiant protest. The identity of the tank man still remains anonymous as people don't know what happened to him after, but he has been noted as a notable figure in the stance against militia harm to the people. Number three, Jolie Kellen. When it comes to love, if you know something is off, listen to your gut and be safe first. Unfortunately for Jolie, she only left one memory to a friend that something ever happened to her, they know who the cause was. In 2015, 18 year old Jolie Kellen was hiking with her ex boyfriend Lauren Bunner when he photographed her on a cliff before he pushed her off of it. The 20 year old killer nearly escaped justice by claiming he was on the autism spectrum in court. This is the exact photo before he pushed her off. Bunner later called the cops and said, I just want to turn myself in for the crime of my ex girlfriend that happened just a little while ago on Cheheha. Mountain. Later that evening, on August 30th, 2015, police found her body still wearing her backpack. Cops believe that he had lured Callahan, who still wanted to remain friends with her former boyfriend, there to kill her because she wouldn't take him back. The court heard him bragging to cellmates about killing the 18 year old, saying if he couldn't have her, no one else could. Number two, Omeg. If you're lucky, you may have had some cute outing photos with your family and friends when you were younger. In this particular photo, it seems like an ordinary day with a young girl and her dad. But unfortunately, it was actually moments before an explosion incident caused by the real IRA or the real Irish Republic Army. A provincial Irish Republican Army splinter group who opposed the IRA ceasefire and the Good, day Fri and the Good Friday Agreement signed earlier that year. The explosion killed 29 people and injured about 220 others. The red Vauxhall Calvier containing the bomb, I can't say, can I say bomb? The red, Volkswagen, the red Vauxhall Calvier containing the explosion, this photograph was taken shortly before the explosion, and the camera was found afterwards in the rubble. The man and the child in the photo both survived, and the injured survivor, Marion Radford, described hearing an unearthly bang followed by eeriness, a darkness that had just come over the place, then screams as she saw bits of bodies, limbs on the ground while she searched for her 16-year-old son. 
Alan. She learned she later discovered he had been killed yards away from her after the two became separated just minutes before the blast. And finally, number one, Andes. Personally, one of the most creepiest photo, and it actually made me feel pretty uncomfy with this one. Seems like a cool crew cut photo of just a bunch of dudes. When in reality, these are the survivors of an Air Force Flight 571 crash in the Andes. Pilot Fer Ferardas had flown across the Andes 29 times previously, and on this flight, he was training a co-pilot, La Guara, who was at the controls. As they flew through the Andes, clouds obscured the mountains, and the controller in Santiago, unaware the flight was still over the Andes, authorized him to descend to 11,500 feet. The rugby players on board joked about the turbulence at first until some passengers saw that the aircraft was very close to the mountain. That was probably the moment when the pilots saw the Black Ridge rising dead ahead. After the crash of the 45 people on the aircraft, three passengers and two crew members of the tail section were killed when it broke apart. The survivors had little food, only eight chocolate bars, a tin of mussels, three small jars of jam, a tin of almonds, a few dates, candies, dried plums, and several bottles of wine. Eventually, their friends made an agreement that if they ever died, they would offer themselves for them to eat, and so they did. The group survived by collectively deciding to eat flesh from the bodies of their dead comrades, and in the photo you can see on the right, a spine. At the end, eight people were rescued and they lived. Anyways, that's all for today and for your next riddle. What starts with an E, ends with an E, and only has one letter? Be sure to put your answer in the comments comments below and I'll reveal the answer in the next video. Top 10 historical places haunted by demons. Now I am excited about that one. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me. My name is Jessa. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see your beautiful faces in the next one. Bye.